Today I'll be proving that any two bases for the same vector space must have the same number of vectors. Okay, so we have to consider two bases for the same vector space, so we can call the vector space V. And let's say we have two bases, so let's say the bases, we have the vectors, let's say we have the vectors V1, V2, up to Vm, and we also have the base W1, W2, up to Wn. So we have two different bases, and we need to prove that M is equal to N. So what I'll do is a proof by contradiction and in this proof, proof by contradiction I'll assume that n is greater than m. So we have two bases where there are more w's and v's. Okay and now what I'll do is write each of the w's as a unique linear combination of the v's. This is because the v's form a basis so we can so we can write each of the w's in terms of the v's. So we can write w1 as equal to we put some coefficients in front of each of the v's. So a11 times v1 plus a21 times v2 plus dot 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 plus am1 times vm. We can also write w2 as a12v1 plus a22v2 plus dot 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 plus am2vm and so on up to wn which is a1mv1 plus a2nv2 oh wait should say Let's say a one n v one plus a two n v two plus up to a m n v m. And now we can represent all this information using a matrix. And to write this as a matrix, we can do can put we have a row of all the vectors w's and this can be written as a row of all the v's and multiplied by a matrix a and the matrix a consists of all the coefficients in front of the v's so you have a11 a12 up to a1n and we have going down to a one m one and we have a m n at the bottom right okay so to see how this works as an example you can see w one is constructed by doing a one one v one plus a two one v two up to am1 vm that's how we get this equality over here using all these equations okay so now we can see this matrix a has n columns and m rows and since n is greater than m this means if we do row reduction of this matrix and convert it into echelon form or a row echelon form it means since there are more columns than rows the number of pivots the number of pivots when you row reduce it will be at most m because there's at most one pivot per row and this is less than n and so the number of free variables when you so when we do the homogeneous equation when we solve the homogeneous equation 
ax equals zero. The number of free variables when you do row reduction will be at least n minus at least n minus m, and this is going to be at least one because n is greater than m. Since we have at least one free variable, it means there exists a non-zero and non-trivial solution to ax equals zero. So we can assume there exists a vector c, and let's say this vector c is equal to b1, b2, up to bn, such that the such that AC is equal to zero and this is also satisfies C not equal to zero. Okay. So now uh, let's say this matrix is W, this matrix is V. So we have W equals V A. And now what happens if I multiply both sides of this equation by C. So we have WC is equal to VAC. And using associativity of matrix multiplication, we can write this as V times AC. And AC is equal to zero, which means we have V times the zero vector. And V times zero vector is also, is going to be the zero vector. Okay, so this is going to be Okay, so if you just look at the dimensions of each of the matrices So V is 1 by M A is M by N And C is N, uh, N by 1 So in fact This is just going to be a 1 by 1 matrix, so just a number 0 so that's V times A times C. And W is 1 times N and C is N times 1. So W times C is just going to be the number 0. Okay. So now W times C is W1, W2, WN and C is B1, B2, Bn. Okay, this is going to be a linear combination B1, W1 plus B2, W2 plus dot 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 plus Bn, Wn. Okay. And this is supposed to be equal to zero because it's the right hand side. So what we see is this is a linear combination of W's giving you zero. But since the W's are linearly independent, W's are linearly independent because the W's are a basis, which means all the B's have to be zero. So the entire vector C must be all zeros. However, this is a contradiction because from earlier we proved that there exists a C that's not zero and this C will, all the B's will satisfy this linear combination being zero. So that gives us a contradiction. And since our, that assumption, our initial assumption that led to a contradiction was that N was greater than M, so this means we can't have N greater than M. This is impossible. And similarly, uh, similarly, we can't have can't have m greater than n. So we must have m equals n. So it means that any two bases you choose must have the same number of vectors, and this completes the proof. Okay, so. Hope you enjoyed this proof, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.